Hi, Bad Cole Rex here again. Doing a little better. Another thing in Lightroom. This time, let's see if we can do something with developing. And uh, I've selected an image down here at the bottom, which will, uh, first of all, let's click on it so it's highlighted. Now, if you click in the middle of a picture like that, it selects it. You can do that. If you command click, then you can select more than one. And you notice, Let's do that. You notice that the one at the bottom right is slightly brighter than the other three. That means that's one of focus. If we click in the middle of any of the others, they all stay selected, but one of them becomes the primary or, or focused image, the, the primary selected image. And that's important for other things like if you are going to transfer metadata, uh, for example, from one photograph to several others, the one that is focused on will become the driving one. So if we, if we wanted to copy a lot of things from one photo to another, that's what we would do. But at any rate, uh, what we'll do here is just click in the frame outside, and now only that one is selected. And we will do command asterisk, I'm sorry, apostrophe. I always say that. Why do I do that? And we make a virtual copy. And remember, virtual copies take absolutely no space on the computer. We double click it, and it's full screen. It's an interesting picture of David with a big old black powder rifle. But as is the case with something when you're shooting toward the sky, the sky is exposed about right, and David's pretty badly underexposed. So. We'll see if there's any hope for it. We click on development in the upper right corner, and now we have access to all the various things. And you'll notice right off looking at the histogram, because we'll, and by the way, Lightroom is laid out so that you start at the top and work your way down, generally speaking, through developing. It's, it's laid out in a very logical sequence, and uh, it's just it's wonderful in that regard. We notice that uh, we're not shoved up against the edge on the right, and we're not shoved up against the edge on the left. So if we click to check for shadows, we have all, or for the really dark points, we have a few up under the hood of the car. There's one, a few right around his fingers and so forth. But that's okay. You want to have some true black in your picture. And when we click over here on highlights, we see up in the sky that we have obviously some blowouts right there and that's okay we'll, we'll we'll not worry about those right now and so they won't be distracting for the moment we'll turn those off and you just click to turn those on and off and if you just hover over them you can check them temporarily well the obvious problem with this is that, that you know while the sky looks pretty good david david's pretty wiped out if we go to the very far right it says recovery down in there you, you have four things you have blacks you have fill light and you notice how that's a range that's kind of grayish and then here's your exposure that's most of the image and then on the extreme edge you have recovery and those are the super highlights so it might be we could get a little bit of that sky back and so we'll pull it down a little bit and notice how now that there are no blown out parts in the sky and we can see our clouds pretty well. But the problem here is of course that David is too dark and if we raise the exposure overall by grabbing that and pull it up, well that works but look what's happening to the sky. Now we do see encouraging things because there's David starting to look pretty good. When you do something and you don't like it, the quickest thing is to go over to the far side to the history and just drop back a step. And now we're right back where we were. It's a beautiful system. Instead of messing with exposure, which is all the stuff up in here, notice that down in here there's a bulk of information. That's really where David is. So if we click on that and just start dragging it over, look at that. David's getting better and better. My golly, he's, he's starting to look pretty good there. And everything else is not too bad. Okay, we've got him up a little bit. Now you notice the blacks are just absolutely gone. If we click on that, there are no blacks at all, and it's making kind of washed out looking. 
if you pull down on that just a little bit and I still don't even have any showing on the screen there we go look down there in that fender under that fender you see it a little off and about there so we want a few blacks in there don't even worry about what the number is it's you don't paint by numbers you paint by looking at it now it's looking pretty darn good and let's say that the exposure is pretty well done so at this point we'll go to the color balance and this was shot late in the afternoon and while that color is fine it, it was actually late afternoon sun and so let's go to a higher color temperature and it warms everything up a little bit giving it that sort of ruddy late afternoon glow you don't have to do very much you notice that is move it very very far so let's look at what that looks like before before that's David and then after if it's too much for you don't do it that much I mean it's it's a personal thing and when we go back we notice over here on the far right the color temperature is 5100 and then when I click on it it goes to roughly 5750 so maybe that's just a touch too much I don't know and again it depends on your monitor and if it's not calibrated you got you got some problems here so looks looks pretty good um, the next things you can mess with I generally you can make all those adjustments right in here the exposure recovery fill light and blacks but I'll, I prefer working up in the histogram it's the same thing you're just grabbing sliders and moving them but to me it's more intuitive to do it up there where it actually is there are three controls here two of which I use a lot one of which I never use, or almost never use. Clarity I use a lot. Clarity is a kind of contrast, but I'm going to click it up kind of high and just watch the picture. Okay, you saw how the contrast went up. And so now let's undo that. Let's do the same thing with contrast and watch. You see, it it's more everything, whereas with clarity, what's happening is you're adding contrast to the lowest contrast areas not across the board it, it's kind of a, a smart contrast and I'll pull it up a little bit and it just gives it a little more intensity and brings out colors better vibrance is the same thing it's gonna bump up the color just a little bit which we probably don't even need because this is not a particularly you know, colorful picture and it's gonna start looking kinda of crazy so just won't mess with that let's just leave that alone so now one thing you can do you can get into the tone curve and if you click on the little target button and you put it where you want it and that's the crosshair that I'm looking at so let's say I want to raise the tones around his face I can click right there and push up on my mouse and you see how his face is getting brighter and if you look down here at the tone curve, you see what it just did. Uh, what I'll do is show you a before and after. Okay, take a look at the tone curve, and then I'm going to turn it off, and that's what it was. And then I turn it back on, and that's it. Now let's look at the picture. Here it is with the tone curve adjustment. Here it is without. And it's a lot like what we did earlier in the histogram but we're pulling up an even narrower band of, uh, of colors the only things I would do now is when I come down into the colors you have hue saturation and luminance hue will adjust the color of a color so, well don't mess with that much saturation obviously is the intensity of the color and luminance is the brightness of the color and that's what I want to work with right now so I will click on luminance again I click the little target button go up here into the sky grab it and pull it down a little bit and what happens is it pulls down the luminance of the blue making the blue darker and bringing out some of the drama in the sky so looking pretty good David's face looks a little bit pinkish so what we may want to do is uh, we may want to 
grab our tent and bring it down just a tad. There we go. Finally here, we'll go to sharpening and generally add a little bit of sharpening. And voila, that's our, that's our picture. And we can go back to the library and we can open up. We we'll, we will do a little uh, control click on the other one, and then we can do a survey thing. And you can see the before and after. And you may have some minor qualms about this, that, and the other with it, but uh, you got to admit it's it's taken a picture that was pretty rotten and turned it into something that's right right presentable. And I think it's uh, pretty good for that. Thank you for watching. Have a good rest of the day.